you. So I think about heaven more than I used to. And I'm encouraged to know too that, you know, you might feel numb. You might feel completely hopeless, hopeless, but you cannot interpret your numbness as God's absence in your life. Never yes. is Jesus absent from your life, from your circumstances. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. Our guest today is no stranger to the heartbreak of loss and the pain of mourning, once a mainstay on Christian radio with songs like Welcome Home and My Irreplaceable, Tammy Trent's world came crashing down shortly after her rise to success on September 11, 2001. She lost her husband and childhood sweetheart in a tragic accident that left her fragmented. That day, she began a journey of wholeness, which became the platform she now uses to minister to women and churches all over the world. Tammy, it is such an honor that you're here with us today, and I just want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Oh, thanks for asking. What a privilege for me to uh, still have an opportunity to share my life with anybody and the, the hope that I've had to cling to. Uh, in the search of healing, the pursuit of healing in my life after such a shattering loss that came out of nowhere. So I'm mm. still grateful that God would choose to use me and that that he sees yeah. that there's something that I still have left to deposit into somebody else. And I think for all of us as followers of Christ, it's just like, you know, I'm always looking for someone else that's mm. gone before me. You know, God is right. my ultimate guidance and I follow him and I love how he will place people and moments and assignments and stuff in our lives that mm. remind us that we're not alone, that we can heal, that we can be restored, that he is a God of peace and of hope and of good things and of increase. So I'm grateful to be that voice sometimes for somebody that just might feel stuck or feel mm. without or just feel like, where is God in the hard stuff? Amen. And you truly, I mean, that's where people are living right now. I mean, the, the depression and anxiety with, with all that's happening globally, uh, it has a lot of people on edge and people are in grief and they just don't know how to deal with these issues. And so I love that God does show his glory and his redemption and uh, his healing grace through stories like yours. So tell us a little bit about your story. I'd love for our viewers to know, how did you and Trent meet and how long did it take for you to, to get married? Yeah. So I remember um, in my youth group, I was probably 15 years old. And I remember I, I went to a very charismatic church. So, you know, lifted up our hands, worship the Lord, <laughs> said, Jehovah Jireh 77 times in a row, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I went there with my girlfriends and worshiping God. And I looked in the back of the room and in came walking in three of the yummiest guys I'd ever seen. And I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> and they found their seats. They lifted up their hands and they started worshiping the Lord. And I thought as a 15 year old mm. girl, that is mm. very attractive. Like I wow. wanted to meet these guys. So I was drawn to them, found out that we lived on the same side of town together. So we got to go to the same fellowship group. We got to know each other through that. We started a date when I turned 16 and we dated for seven mm. and a half years. I went off to Bible college, came back wow. and I thought, I can't live without this guy. He's my best friend. Mm. He feels like a soulmate. He's been everything to me. He's been faithful. He's yeah. been consistent. He's been a voice of of life to me and adventure. And he mm. loves God. What more could a girl want? And he's gorgeous. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> what a package. <laughs> yeah. I, I said, uh, I do. And I said, absolutely. Yes. And we mm. walked down that aisle and everything changed for me that day. Everything, everything that I experienced in my dating relationship with him just now overflowed into our marriage. And I really felt blessed I felt lucky, mm -hmm. you know, at that time, those were the words that I used. I'm so lucky to have such sure. love in my life. And I was truly blessed to have that. And he continued to be faithful and consistent and loving and solid, just a rock solid man in my life. Wow. And we were married for 11 years. During that time, I had signed a record deal. And so, uh, you know, the dreams 
came true of, of a little girl that had these dreams growing up to write music, to sign a record deal, yeah. to travel the world, like all those things were happening. And I asked him to leave his family business and come on the road with me and travel with me in full-time ministry. So when I signed a record deal, I took his first name uh, as my last mm. name on stage. So together we were Tammy and Trent Linderink, but on the platform, I became Tammy Trent. And we started to travel the oh, world together in ministry full-time, just jumped all in. And, you know, he, he started to manage me as well. And somehow we just made it all work. We didn't just love each other, but we liked each other. We liked hanging out. We liked, yeah. being, we yeah. liked being in the middle of what God was doing in both of our lives. It was exciting to us. We weren't um, cynical to it. We weren't worn out by it. We just thought this mm. is the great adventure and we get to do it together. What's next, God? Mm. And so I got a call to go over to Jamaica on a mission trip. And it mm -hmm. was a season now in our marriage. After 11 years of marriage, we'd moved to Nashville. We built our first home together in, in Brentwood, Tennessee, and been here for two years. And this call comes in and, and I had this feeling like God's up to something. I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. I feel this, this something in my, mm -hmm. in my gut, in my spirit, in my heart. So we got on a plane and we, we headed to Jamaica on this mission trip. We vacationed on one side of the island before we were, were to begin our mission trip on the other side. We had one day off. Trent said, babe, what do you want to do on this day off? And I mm. said, well, if I know you like I know you, you've made a list of things. Every guy makes a list. Yeah. <laughs> so show me your list. And I started yeah. going through the list. But the top of the list mm. it said the Blue Lagoon. And I knew Trent wanted to go to the Blue Lagoon because he could dive. He could scuba dive. He could free dive in this lagoon. He'd been a certified diver since he was 12. He never did anything mm. to take a risk. Uh, when he was in the water. So wow. I knew that that would be something fun that he wanted to do. So I said, babe, let's go to the Blue Lagoon. So we mm -hmm. headed there. We had lunch on the edge of the water and then Trent suited up. That day he was free diving. That's when you hold your breath. You go in without oxygen, without tanks. So you hold your breath. He was great at that. He could hold his breath up to three, four minutes underwater. He was so good. I sat on the edge of the water, finishing lunch, I watched him slip into the water and I waved goodbye to him, just like we had done so many times with each other before where he'd turn and wave and I'd go out of the picture and come back and I'd wave again. And, you know, so it was one of those moments where we just kept waving and then he sunk beneath the surface and he was gone. And I had no idea, Brenda, at that moment that that would be the last time I would ever see Trent alive again. And just there was a shift. There was a change. I didn't feel it immediately because he said he'd be back in 15 minutes. But when 15 came and went and he didn't return, I thought, well, give him some time. Turned into 30, turned into 45, into an hour. And I knew then this is not okay. Something has changed. And this isn't like Trent. He'd come back and tell me if something was different. And he didn't. And I stood on the edge of the water. I called in a dive team that started to look for Trent in the water. I went to the back room of this restaurant by myself and I just wept. I just cried. Mm. Oh. I just had one of those moments of, um, God, do you see this girl? Like, do you see me? Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Are you there? Is heaven real? Is this real? Like, I know all the right answers. I, I know what I'm supposed to say. I know what I'm supposed to feel. But I feel numb. Mm. And I don't know what yeah. to pray. So I'm just going to lift my hands toward heaven and ask you to help me. Mm. God, help me. And I think in that surrender, in that moment, something happened. I was all alone. I couldn't reach anybody. There was nobody there but me and Jesus. And he also knew that that was going to be an important moment for me to, to know what it was like to call on him, that he would be the one to rescue me. He would be the voice of hope for me. And so that began that journey as I cried out to God, asking him to rescue me in that moment. I remember just um, closing my eyes and singing praise songs, worshiping God as best that I could until three hours went by and they came and said, we can't find Trent. We're going to have to call the search off. We can't find him. And I went up to a home of two wow. doctors that night the next morning, the doctor came into the room. He said, Tammy, come and look at the television in the other room. 
That was the morning of September 11, 2001. So as the second plane plowed into the Twin Towers in New York City, my whole world was falling apart in Jamaica. Wow. Right? So everything. And, and wow. I think we can all say that we remember exactly where we were at that moment. And I yeah. will absolutely never forget. Um, and I think where healing really began for me, as I started to try to put the pieces all together at that time, even being stuck in Jamaica because all flights were grounded, I headed to Kingston where Trent and I were originally planning on going. Only now I walked into the same hotel with my father-in-law who had made it to me the night before. He, he was the only oh. one that made it to me. So we got adjoining rooms. And the next day he wanted to go back to the Blue Lagoon and I couldn't go. I stayed behind. I just didn't have the strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I realized he was gone and I was alone, I found myself just weeping again in the bathroom, just saying, God, do you see this girl? Do you hear me? If you're real, could you send me somebody that would hold me? I'm not asking for a hundred angels, a thousand, just one angel that would just hold me and comfort me. Could you do that for me, God? Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling something like, get up and just move, Tammy, just move. Don't, don't, don't just stay in this bathroom. So I got up and I started to move through this room and I could hear somebody in the adjoining room. And when I got there, I looked up and I saw this beautiful Jamaican woman standing there in a Hilton housekeeping outfit. And I looked at her and I said, ma'am, I said, could you come in and just make my bed? Could you just come in and make my bed? And she said, I could hear you crying and I've been trying to get to you. She said, could I just come in and hold you? Oh. I was like, yes, I think I cried. I think I laughed. I was like, yes. Oh. yes. And she walked in, she wrapped her arms around me. She started praying for me. She didn't know what was going on in my life. Uh, she didn't know the details of it. I didn't know she was a believer. She didn't know I was one, but I sat there in that wow. moment in that embrace. And I thought, Brenda, for the first time, I thought I had no idea angels wore Hilton mm. house outfits. I would have called her sooner. Oh, right. But that oh. was when the healing that I know beyond a doubt was when the healing began because I chose mm. to receive it. I asked God yeah. for something specific. He mm. showed up in the form of this woman saying, I'm here. And I felt mm. it. And I knew that that was a pivotal moment for me to accept my healing and to walk in it. Now, it didn't happen overnight. Mm. But I knew that this was the beginning and it was going to be yeah. hard work and it was going to be a lot of right. sacrifice and surrendering and laying down and a lot of kicking and screaming. But the healing began, that journey began for me right at that moment of choosing to allow God to rescue me. Yeah. Amazing. And, you know, I, your story is so encouraging to all of us. And uh, when we are in that place of absolute trauma and no hope, there is only one that we can call on. Uh, how did you go from a place of shock to a place of having to process the grief, the deep grief, the deep loss and disappointment to a place of being able to take your story and minister to the grief in others? You know, Brenda, I knew that I had nothing much to give initially because I was almost coming from a place of emptiness. Mm -hmm. So thank God I had enough wisdom to say, come off the road. Like don't yeah. try to be a hero right now and, and hit a platform or do an interview because mm. you're coming from a place mm -hmm. of emptiness. You don't even know yeah. what grief feels like and healing and how to process through that. So do that properly as best you can surround yourself with people that love you right now in your community here in Nashville. Uh, your mm -hmm. church, your pastors, life, life. Don't shut the door and, and just be sort of swallowed up in the darkness. Keep the door open, turn on the lights and welcome mm -hmm. people into your home because you're in a place right now where you've lost that, that, that care. Like I had to care for Trent. I took care of Trent. I was his wife, all that. And so now that was gone. Mm -hmm. So I thought, mm -hmm. Let me bring people in and care for them. Let me love on my friends. Wow. Let's have some girls nights once a month. I'll invite mm -hmm. a ton of girls over. We'll laugh. We'll cry. We'll do life. We'll cook meals. We'll play Yahtzee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I would say, bring yeah. somebody. It's, even if mm -hmm. I don't know them, if they're especially a single girl, bring them and let's just have time together. And I did that for an entire year. And I asked God for a year. Mm -hmm. I said, I need, I, Lord, I want to be faithful. I do. I don't know what healing looks like. I've never gone through mm -hmm. something like this. So I want right. to be faithful. 
Um, and I don't even know what that looks like. Um, but I think when we get there, we'll know together. So if I could have a year off the road, time to heal, time to just be. And I felt like he was saying, I'm great with that. I'm great with that. So when that time passed, I got a call from the women of faith and they said, would you come and take the platform and share your story and share your music? And, you know, Brenda, at first I said, no, I don't think I'm ready. And here it was that year where I said, God, can you give me this? And so he gave it to me and I was still saying, no, <laughs> you know, so they you back. and they did. And I was like, I have to say, yes, I've got to hold yeah. up my end of the deal and God mm -hmm. has come through. So I need to meet him and come through on my part. So I said, yes. And I got up my first event with Women of Faith in Columbus, Ohio. I'll never forget it. There was about 20,000 women in that arena. Wow. And I had no huge plan. I just got up and shared the story and sang a song. I think I sang a worship song. And then I sang My Irreplaceable, yeah. which made me dance. And it was such a moment. I'll never forget it. That last note that I sung, I was just weeping. I think my hands were like this and just crying. It's just like, I like wow. I feel like I got through it. I did it. I got through and I opened my eyes mm. and I saw this entire arena, these women just standing, just clapping. Oh. And it wasn't in the moment like, oh, you're amazing. Sing it again. They were just like, we're here, girl. We're standing in the gap for you. You can do this. You can keep going. And it just gave me life. It gave me hope. It gave me strength and encouragement to do it the next week and the next and the next. And each wow. weekend that I did it, I got stronger. My spirit got stronger. I danced a little more. I sang a little louder. It just, I was growing and getting stronger. And it was that arena, that platform that just was a platform of healing for me. Why? Yeah. Because these women allowed me to be a real girl, letting a real God put her back together again. There was mm -hmm. no agenda, no agenda. Mm -hmm. And I love being in places in my life where there's no agenda, where I just get to show up yeah. and let God do what he wants to do. And I always walk away from a time like that or a moment like that or an event like that and go, God did what he wanted to do. And how cool that I got to be a part yeah. of it. Mm, so rich. And that's what I love about you is that you are, you, you really seem to be living life as a dance with Jesus. And that um, is so beautiful. I think there's too many platforms that are just so well rehearsed and there's no vulnerability there. And, you know, people just, they don't want the polish. They want the vulnerability. They want to see the real story. Uh, being lived out where Jesus meets us in our brokenness. And I mean, yeah. that's certainly my story. And would you say that um, you can't achieve or, or discover the true beauty in life or even in within yourself without the pain? Yes, absolutely. I would, I would agree with that. I, I'm an entirely different person than I was mm -hmm. 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first met Trent, married at such a young age at 22 and 21, I'm an entirely different person today yeah. because of the journey I've traveled. I almost wish Trent could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish he, I wish he could see me now. Yeah. And, and I know that. Heaven may give him glimpses from time to time, but truthfully, I think he's so busy in heaven that he's like, I don't care what she's doing. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, maybe God gives him an update every once in a while and just says, uh, mm. she's she's pressing yeah. on. She's a soldier and she's doing fine. And she still, she still isn't married. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, oh, I just, goodness. I'm a different girl. And um, he would be proud mm. of, woman of God yeah. that I yeah. have become. I've not done everything right. I've mm. made plenty of mistakes and some yeah. bad choices in my life. And I'm just grateful for God's mercy and for his grace and that he mm. always wants good things for us. Um, and yeah. I've lived in that place and I'm in that place now of continuing Amen. to chase after the good in my life, not the bad, but the good. What do I have rather than what I don't have? But I'm yeah. a different woman for sure because of the journey I've traveled. Mm so powerful. And he is a good father and he has so much good for us. And you're right. It's so easy to get, 
you know, to ruminate on all that has been lost or done wrong or the betrayals or whatever the grief comes from. And, uh, you know, the Lord wants us to be looking at his goodness because he, there's always purpose uh, in the journey for us, no matter what the damage is, no matter what kind of evil we've experienced. Uh, you know, he takes whatever the enemy means for harm and he does turn it and use it for not only our good, but then for the good of the kingdom, just as he's yep. done in your life. I would love for you to encourage someone. Uh, like I said, there's so many people, you know this, that are just, uh, they have no hope right now. And I really believe that everything that you've said has ministered to someone. The presence of the Lord is here. And would you uh, encourage someone who's in the midst of mourning or they're, they're in the midst of hopelessness, where is the hope on their horizon in the next few minutes? Oh, my goodness. So much to, to say. You know, when I think about people feeling numb and feeling stuck, and I think for me, the thing that has helped me and the way I would encourage somebody is, especially in my loss, and if, if you're facing loss or you've gone through loss and you just can't get past it, one thing I was reading the other day was just the hope of eternal. We think so much on earth and the stuff that's happening here, our focus is so much here because it's just kind of everything's pulling at our attention here on earth right now in the craziness of earth. So I'm trying to switch that thinking a little bit for me and think more on the eternal. Let me think on the eternal. Let me think of what's waiting. And for those that are fresh in grief, that have lost especially, that's a hard thing to do. But if somehow you can switch that and think of the eternal, to think uh, this kind of thought brought life to me when I thought that that Trent and I, even in our friendship, are still very much connected. He is very mm -hmm. much alive. He is not dead. He is right. alive and he is living life to the fullest. And we are still connected. He is a part of the body of Christ. And I'm just down here, part of the body of Christ. So he's living a full life there, serving, living, connected. And I'm here. That veil is so yes. very, very thin. Yes. So you've got to kind of grab a hold of that thought, reality, and truth to know that there's so much waiting. So I think about heaven more than I used to. And I'm encouraged to know too that, you know, you might feel numb. You might feel completely hopeless, hopeless, but you cannot interpret your numbness as God's absence in your life. Never yes. is Jesus absent from your life, from your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Never is he not speaking. Never is he not present. I'll be with you wherever, forever, and whenever he is always mm. in it with us, he knows every single detail of your life. He knows the prayers you pray. Now you, you don't have to keep every day. Like I've learned that I don't have to keep praying the same thing every single day. I can pray it, but now I have to walk it in faith and believe it every day. Like wake up and declare it in the name of Jesus. I am believing yeah. for wholeness in my life, God. I'm believing for restoration in my life. I'm believing that you'll put the pieces of my life back together again, that you'll turn these ashes into beauty. I'm believing these and declaring this over my life. So many times it's easier for us just to, to sit in the other and just to, oh, I'm missing out and I'm angry and Mad, and we have every right to probably have those feelings, but somehow mm -hmm. you have to turn that around at some point and say, In the name of Jesus, I want yes, yes. to feel life. I have so much waiting for me, the promises of God. And even though I feel numb, does not mean that you are not present in my life, God. We have Amen. to believe the promises of God and that He comes mm -hmm. to heal, to mend, mm -hmm. to bring increase into your life, not to take from you, to, but to bring increase into your life. So I pray. I pray that you feel covered, that you feel surrounded yes. in comfort mm -hmm. that only Jesus could bring to your life today, that you just Amen. breathe in a little differently and trust that God, God will bring this to fruition in your life in healing, healing, yes. healing ways for you in Jesus mm -hmm. name. Jesus name. Amen. Wow. What a way to wrap this up. I wish we had all day to be able to do this. How can people reach you? Uh, I'm going to give you my cell phone. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> just, me, just text me if you need me. <laughs> you know what? You can go to TammyTrent.com is my website. So everything is there. I think you can link yeah. to my 
Instagram from there, Facebook fan page. You can even email me from there. It does come into my office and I will have a chance to respond to you that way. I think that's the best way to connect with me. Um, I'm going to be awesome. starting a new adventure with Jesus here pretty soon and be involved in some more TV work. So I'm excited about that and what's on the horizon in this next great adventure in my life. Awesome. Well, we bless you, friend. And thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us here at the table. Join us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.